Prisma 3D 3.0 beta version is a mess, but before you jump to conclusions, I want you to watch this video from start to finish. There's a lot to unpack and I'll walk you through everything. Before we dive in, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more updates. When you first open the new beta version of Prisma 3D, you'll notice that the user interface has changed from the previous version. There are some new features that stand out. For example, there's a new figure option for character modeling and an audio panel that allows you to import audio files directly from your device. One of the most notable updates is in the render panel located in the top right corner of the screen. Now you can render your creations in both portrait and landscape mode, offering more flexibility depending on your project's needs. When it comes to modeling, the tools remain largely the same as before. I was hoping for some improvements like the addition of a smooth tool, but unfortunately that hasn't been included yet. On the plus side, there's a small but significant improvement in the modeling workflow. Now, when you select an object and enter the modeling mode, it automatically isolates that object, allowing you to focus solely on it without accidentally interfering with other objects in your workspace. What do you think of these changes? Let me know in the comments what modeling improvements you'd like to see in future updates. Next up, let's talk about the material tools which you can find under the modeling panel. Just like before, these tools cover transparency, reflection and coloring and they haven't really changed in this update. Now moving on to animation. To activate the animation panel, start by clicking the small icon at the bottom right corner of the screen. Then click on keyframe on the left side and the animation panel you need will appear. I've noticed significant improvements in the animation tools. It's clear that the developers are focused on making animation easier for users. You can now animate objects with more precision, easily adjusting the animation time frame and movement. There's also a new icon that looks like an infinity symbol, which I believe might be for creating infinite loops in animations. Additionally, character models are now available and they come with pre-made animations to save you time. This is a great addition, especially for those who want to jump straight into animating without starting from scratch. Moving on to lighting and camera features, there's not much to report here. They remain the same, which is fine since they were already functioning well. Now, let's discuss rigging. The rigging system hasn't changed either, it still offers both humanoid and custom rigging options. However, I think there's room for improvement. Specifically, the rigging could be refined to prevent bones from behaving abnormally during the process. What do you think? Share your thoughts on this in the comments. Now. Let's talk about some bugs I encountered in this beta version. First off, the material tools aren't functioning properly. While you can still change the color of light, transparency, reflection and color options aren't working as they should. I also ran into an issue when trying to add a custom bone to an object. It simply doesn't apply. I haven't tested the IK humanoid rigging yet, but based on this, I'm concerned there might be more issues there. Another problem I found was when importing a character from an older version of the app, it completely messed up the character making it unusable. There's a major bug in the export feature. If you try to take any action in the export menu, the app freezes and the only way to get out of it is to cancel the app and restart. Finally, let's talk about the new audio feature. I know many users have been asking for this and while it's a useful addition, I believe there are other, more important updates that could have taken priority, such as the introduction of simulation features. What do you think? Is the audio feature a welcome addition? So that's it for this video review. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll keep you updated with all the latest news and updates on Prisma 3D and other 3D modeling tools. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.